Hey everybody, welcome to another Lunch with Norm. I'm Norm Farrar, aka The Beard Guy, and this is the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. Today we're going to be talking about something really cool, how to bootstrap your very first Amazon business. We hear so many things about, did I miss, you know, the, the, the gold rush at the beginning in 2014 or 13? We're going to tell you that, you know, what we think is the truth about how to bootstrap your business, what's it going to cost. And today I've got an expert at this as well. So it's a good friend of mine that we've known each other since he's probably basically around 2014 or so. But here's what we're going to talk about. Is it possible to start an Amazon business uh, with a limited budget? That's the big question. What does it mean to bootstrap your first uh, product launch? And if you can afford to spend more of your time and money on the product and what you should do if it's not working. So welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Okay, like I said, today it's going to be a, a little bit different topic. We've never touched on this, yet it's so important. It's how to bootstrap your very first Amazon business. Now, if you've already got a product up there, keep watching because you're going to learn a lot. We've got an expert on. And our guest today, he serves a, a dual purpose. He's the chief product officer over at amazing.com. And that's the company that got me started. And the president of Zoof. He has helped teach over 35,000 entrepreneurs on how to build profitable businesses and sell their businesses um, with physical products. In his new role as president at Zoof, he and his team are continually building the best software tools for both advanced and beginner e-commerce businesses. My guest, my very good friend, Mike McClary, will be joining us in a second. But first, let's have a word from our sponsor. If you're selling on Amazon in 2022, you know how important it is to stand out from your competition. Let Hona Worldwide lend a helping hand with your product innovation to outcompete your competition online. That's right. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the success of your newly innovative product while Hono handles all the work. Visit HonoWorldwide.com for more information. That's Honu, H-O-N-U, worldwide.com, or email savings at honuworldwide.com. All right, let's bring in the boy Blunder. All right, that's me. Hello, happy Friday, Norm. Happy, happy Friday. Did you know that Mike, Mike's one of the first people that uh, I, I knew in the Amazon space, but did you know that if it wasn't for amazing.com, uh, ASM, that we wouldn't be sitting here because I wouldn't have been involved with Amazon. I I did not know that. And I was actually talking to Mike before the podcast that I, and I think the rest of my our family had no idea what you were doing when you were talking about Amazon, selling on Amazon, Amazon FBA. We just kind of nodded our heads and just- You okay, smiled yeah. and waved. You, you keep doing that. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. You do what you want. But-, but uh, uh, no, it was Matt Clark, Jason Katzenbeck back in the day. Uh, and actually, I started this journey back when they had their beta program. And it was called AMM. And it was about Kindle products. And then uh, I, and I didn't get involved. But then around, I think it was ASM 3 or 4 is when I took notice with, you, you know, Riz, my buddy. Yes. So we went down to, to Vegas together. And uh, checked it out, and we both joined. And he's a very successful Amazon seller now. And then I got into this, so yeah, I owe uh, I owe everything Amazon wise to the people over at Amazing. So I just wanted to give that shout out. Okay, so what do you got to say? What do you got to do? All right. Well, I can see that we already have a bunch of new listeners. So of course, welcome to the Lunch with Norm podcast. If you're new to the show, we go live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. You can catch us here. Uh, the fun thing about this podcast is that we do giveaways. So every single podcast, we do an, uh, a giveaway for you guys. Um, just stick around and you'll learn exactly how to enter that. It's a great giveaway today. 
And um, yeah, uh, we can get started. Uh, just a few things before that, though. We start off by smashing those like buttons, giving us a thumbs up if you're enjoying this episode. Uh, if you're watching from YouTube specifically, you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you're watching from Facebook, make sure you like the page. And um, if you want to know more about the community, if you want to hang out with the Beardos, you might see those in the comment sections or not. That That's our community, the Beardos or Beard Nation. So um, if you see anyone in the comments, you can probably guarantee that they're going to be in that community. So that's the Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA and e-commerce uh, collective. Uh, join there. Um, it's a great place to ask questions about Amazon, and yeah, we can see. Welcome, Buffal. Uh, we've got Howard smashing those like buttons. Appreciated. We got Don. Uh, Rad, He's trying. He's trying. Hey, uh, by the way, Kelsey, I don't know if there is a problem, but Don's saying that he uh, he's having a hard time loading it. Yeah, if if you are having a hard time loading it for some reason, we do have YouTube available and LinkedIn, so you can always check that out. Yeah, we find the YouTube the YouTube link specifically is the best for quality wise. But yeah, um, yeah, try that. I can send a link um, after I'm done this here. Uh, but yeah, cool hand ninety nine. Welcome, Fanny. Uh, good to see you again. We have a Facebook user, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a great show. Uh, I won't take up too much more of your time, and we can get started. Okay. So one of the things I want to say, even before we get started, we we've started a little bit of a new format for those of you that are new. You've never heard of the Wheel of Kelsey. Well, maybe you have. But with the Wheel of Kelsey, we had all these people that were joining at the beginning. Hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. They didn't know what the prize was. And so sometimes people were winning and they either didn't need the prize or didn't want it. So what we've done now is we're going to hold off every like every podcast. We do give a giveaway. And I mean, it's every, it's been crazy, like some of the giveaways that we've had, but it's going to be the hashtag. And then about halfway through the show, we're going to talk about the mystery word. And then all you have to do is just enter ha uh, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, the mystery word. And if you tag two people, you'll get a second entry. So this is an incredibly long intro, but I just wanted to make sure that we did this. We're going to be just mentioning this throughout the different podcasts now. So now, just if you have comments or questions, throw them over in the comment area and sit back, relax, grab that cup of coffee, uh, Mike branded or not branded, and welcome, Mr. McClary. Awesome. Thanks, Norm. Thanks, Kelsey, for having me today. Uh, first podcast I've done in ages, uh, and I can't think of a better place or person to do it with than here on Lunch with Norm. Well, thank you, sir. So it, it's really interesting, uh, you know, going down the path, with, especially with you and the other two guys, Rich at the time. Uh, you know, it's it's Amazon has an incredible community. We have this incredible community with with our group, but Amazon in general has this group that it's it's a give to get community, wouldn't you think? And it doesn't matter if you're up here selling nine figures or if you're down here just starting out there there's so much sharing that's going on i have never seen this in a group of sellers or uh, product service providers before no i agree it kind of blew me away when i got involved in it back in 2013 for me um i was a student learning just kind of like you, know, you were norm as well and it was almost addictive to help people you know, we had a face group, Facebook group back then. Yep. People were talking about products they were finding, they were launching. People were sharing their wins, their problems, their tips. Uh, and if you think about how crazy that was, it was an entire community of people competing against each other, but all of them deciding instead to help one another, to share in the successes. And I think that's what made, you know, Amazon amazing, the entire communities we have out here take off the way they did because of the people, the giving attitude uh, other than that it would have been you know a very cutthroat business that everyone would have held everything close to the vest instead it's a very giving sharing community where everyone's been able to share in these successes and i can't tell you how thankful i am to be a part of that yeah you know the one thing that drives me crazy though i don't know if, if with you but uh i've talked to all sorts of sellers service providers about this i know uh i'm an old guy you know, sometimes I don't even remember my name, but I do remember trade shows. And I went out 
I would meet with friendly competitors. I'd have a drink. I'd break bread. They knew what I was selling. I knew what they were selling. We kind of knew how they were, you know, what their marketing strategies were. And it was not a big deal. And I remember doing this with Kevin King uh, the first time I, well, not the first time, but uh, in Hawaii at an event, having a cigar on a beach. We both had the exact same product. We both sat there and told each other, this is what I'm doing. Basically, this is what I'm doing. I got to know like his supplier. It was a little bit different than my supplier. And at the end of the day, we drove traffic. We both drove traffic over to a page that helped both of us win. And really, at the what we were trying to do is, okay, I'm driving traffic. I'm driving traffic. Now we just have to fight for the best listing. So I was hoping that my listing was better than his and he was hoping the, you know, vice versa. But that's what people still are afraid of. I, I see that a lot where they hold their bread or they hold their product. Like people know what I sell. I don't care because at the end of the day, if I'm not on my game and I, I might see somebody new come on, they might have some pretty cool techniques. Well, I might duplicate that or try to better it but it's all competition isn't a bad thing so anyways i've gone down this whole stupid rabbit hole but you know have you seen that as well it it was one of the oddest um situations uh, that i've seen as well why people are always so afraid to share the types of products that they're selling and i had oddly enough an exact same scenario that you and kevin had with my good friend john gill we were in aruba we we're all sitting around. It might have been the Mai Tai that led to this happening, <laughs> but we ended up talking about the products we sold and we sold the exact same products. And we ended up sharing our supplier contacts because he was having an issue at the time with his supplier, worrying about going out of stock. And I was thinking, heck, take my supplier. They create the exact same products. And that way I'll know yours, you'll know mine. So if anything ever happens, we it's always good to have a backup. And we shared the information and it felt like so, um, like, such a relief that yeah. someone knew exactly what I was selling. And we were doing some other works uh, workshops around that time as well. And we noticed like my product was ranked above his, his was ranked above mine at one point in time. And then we realized how bad is it going to be if we're, as long as we're both in that top five, top 10, does it really matter? You know, it, that, that you have a friend or someone that, you know, competing with you. And, and I agree. I, I didn't think so. I mean, I, I want to tell everyone my very first product I launched, it was a leather conditioner. Um, and it was great because it was very affordable to launch. And I learned a lot about this. And then the next product I launched was a camping lantern, which, and I still sell all types of lanterns and flashlights today. It's one of my, my biggest niches that I'm into. I sell them as a vendor. I sell them, uh, as my own third party sellers uh, accounts as well. Um, and so I'm happy to share that now. It kind of feels good to be able to share that kind of stuff, um, because people so seldom do. And I think it just makes it more real and down to earth when you know what people are selling. Again, I get it. People don't want to share because they're always yeah. afraid someone's going to come in. But in reality, Norm, you, you and I know this. Everyone, if they know how to look for good products, can find good products. It doesn't matter whether it's yours. Um, they're going to find good products, whether it's yours or not. And so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. I don't think so either anymore. Right, right. I exactly. So I'm going to just, this is for the listeners. Have you ever talked to a competitor and have you ever shared information? I'm just curious. It's not the topic of the day, but throw in a comment or a question there. I'd love to hear what you have to say. So let's now, you know, 20 minutes into this or whatever it is, 13 <laughs> minutes in, uh, let's start talking about our topic of the day and that's bootstrapping. And, you know, one of the things that uh, I, I want to talk about is, you know, how do you get this done? How do you know if you should get started in Amazon, uh, let's start with that question. Just how do you know you're a real estate agent, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're hearing about this gold rush and it's not, uh, you know, it's hard work, but how do you know whether you should get into it or not? You know, I think one thing is you need to be curious. You need to want to try to explore new avenues and to better your life. Um, I firmly believe today, you know, 19 years into this business myself, even though it is more competitive, everyone who's involved with this knows that it's more competitive out there right now. It's still the best business you can get involved in if you're looking to do some 
type of business and make a change in your life. There's nothing else that you can start for low cost, uh, low time, low effort. Um, you still got to put work into it. Don't get me wrong. Like if you want to be successful, it takes work. But if you want to dabble and see just what it's like, it's the perfect business to do that with because you don't have to have an office. You don't have to have a huge amount of inventory or website. You can just get going with an idea and a little bit of knowledge. Knowledge you get probably with your group, Norm, with uh, the free content weave away. A little bit of knowledge can go a long way. And you can test the waters to see if you enjoy this. I know people that um, I always think, now you're probably the same way. I love this business so much and talk about it so much. I assume every other person on earth would feel the same way. It's not the case. You know, some people, they try it out and it's just not for them. So I think that talking about bootstrapping, which is trying to do this as affordably as possible, is a great way to test the waters before you drop thousands of dollars in inventory and training and tools. Um, just try it out. See if you like it. I believe that as many people as possible, if they were to try this, they would get a taste for it and be addicted like we were back in the day and probably still are. You know, uh, I, there's things happening with the economy right now. I'm not going to get into it, but things are happening and people are worried. People are worried for jobs. People are worried for money. You know, how am I going to spend a few extra dollars on the gas? Blah, 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 blah. But this is the perfect, the absolute perfect outlet for a side hustle. You know, it, it, it doesn't take a lot just to test the waters. And the question, the big question is the budget. Like usually when somebody says, how much do I need to spend? I say, how long is a piece of string? Uh, so, so um, but, you know, let's talk about just getting in and testing it. And then let's talk about if you want to jump in with both feet, what do you have to do and what kind of budget? Yeah. So keep in mind, you said, we'll talk about the people jumping in, you know, both feet going, going deep into this. That's a whole different conversation right? and different budget, different skills, different resources you need. What we're going to talk about, what I want to talk about, which I seldom get a chance to talk about because we talk, you know, we work a lot with high end sellers. And so if you talk about, ah, oh, you can get going for $500,000, their eyes are like, what are you talking about? There's no <laughs> way. And the, it first comes down to what is your goal? If you want to build a million dollar business, you're going to need more than $500,000 to $1,000. That is a fact that it just, it's not going to happen. Maybe 10 years ago, that could have happened because things were different. Nowadays, you're going to need more money, more resources to build a million dollar plus business. But if you want to build a side hustle, think of being an Uber driver or a Lyft driver or doing DoorDash, where you want to make three, 500 bucks a month to get going, maybe up to a thousand. You can do this for 500 to a thousand dollars. As long as you focus on the right things, and are able to, like I said, bootstrap this. You know, everyone has three resources that I think of, Norm. You got time, you got money, and you have your skills. And on that skill side, um, I include like your skills and your network, people you can reach out to. And everyone has different allocations of what they have. Some people have a lot of money, but a little time. Um, some people have a lot of time, little money. Some people have all three. Some people have a lot of skills, but not a lot of time or money. You need to think about what you do and don't have. And the people that I think probably want to get going, but have the hardest time right now are those that don't have a lot of money, given the economy, their personal history, what's going on with the world uh, lately in the past, just whatever it is, if you don't have a lot of money, then you're going to need to focus a little bit more on the time you put towards this and being really smart about your skills that you develop or the people you network with. And I think if you can get, but you still need some money, you still need, let's say 500 to a thousand dollars because you have to buy products. You can't get around that. We're not talking right. about drop shipping, not talking about wholesaling. We're still talking about buying products that you can sell on Amazon and not compete uh, by selling Tide laundry detergent. Um, so I think if you can spend five to a thousand dollars in inventory, you can get started and you just got to be really smart with your time and everything else you spend money on. And I have a whole list that I made notes of. So if you see my eyes glancing this way, it's on my screen right over here because I want to make sure I captured and share as much as I could about this. Yeah. Yeah, and and it'd be interesting to to get to that list as well. But when you're looking at uh, spending five hundred to a thousand dollars, a lot of people that have listened to this podcast hear me go off on building a brand, brand story, you know, being consistent. We're not talking about that right now. 
exactly. we're just talking. That's we're not just, it at all. If you want to build a brand, you need to invest in it. You need yeah. money to invest in it. If you want to learn how to sell on Amazon and still hopefully break even or even make a little bit of money, that's what we're talking about. You're not going to go out there and create the next Apple um, with five hundred to thousand dollars, but you can learn this business and see if it's right for you. And I also believe that you can do that uh, and not lose money. You can, you know, get a think about the education you get over the next six to twelve months uh, by investing a little bit of time and money and learning this business, and then you can decide either you go forward with it and then maybe save money along the way to build an entire brand. Or decide it's not quite right for you. Or another option too, Norm, is if you like a side hustle, let's bring in a couple hundred bucks a month in profit. What's wrong with that? Nothing at all. Nothing um, at all. Yeah. It's a great option. Yeah. You, sometimes you hear these people, oh, I made so much money. I made like, this is what I'm selling. Uh, yeah, that's your revenue. Uh, <laughs> top line. <laughs> but but what's wrong with making an extra 500 bucks or a few hundred bucks especially in these times, it's not a bad thing. And I really hope that if you're nervous about e-commerce or if you're nervous about Amazon, I I have a love hate relationship with Amazon more love than hate, but there's times I can strangle it. Um, but just understanding the process, the platform getting out there and just trying it out. I, Mike, I had this guy, I am, I hope he's listening. I'm not going to say his brand. He started out uh, just uh, about a year ago. He called me this week. Okay. He started out and he said, if I bought 500 units, um, I would be so happy if I could just get rid of them over the period of the year. He started selling. And in the first day he got nine sales. So he ran downstairs and he got, you know, telling his dad that he got nine sales and uh, anyways, he got, went back upstairs and he had 10 sales. He didn't realize that his dad had bought the next one, so he would have 10 sales. But anyways, his call to me yesterday was, this has been an incredible year. He started a year ago. This is not, this is not the norm, okay? I don't want to screw up anybody's expectations. He just hit a million dollars. This is not 2013. A million dollars. And he, he, he started out. And this is what I like doing. It's the starting it out and evolving. So he took the products. He saw what his uh, reviews were like. He, heard, like he, he looked at his competitors. And then he started to evolve. He started to evolve. He started to evolve. And the more and more that he evolved, the more sales that he got. And then he started to expand to influencers. And, you know, so anyways, if you're listening, congratulations. You had the biggest success story I've heard of this year. And he started with nothing. You know, so it's let's. Still, it's still possible to norm. Like you said, yeah. that is not the norm. That's not the expectation. Um, that's the possibility, not the probability. And, but if you don't try that's not even a possibility. And I love hearing stories like that and hats off to him for doing everything he possibly could to start that business. Yeah. So for, for those of us who may not know what bootstrapping is or how to bootstrap a product or product launch, can we kind of go through, first of all, definition and then the steps? Yeah, sure. So bootstrapping, think about it. You hear about this in startups. It's when they start with no outside funding at all. People are doing it with the resources that they have in order to start their business. Either they can't get funding or they don't want funding because they want to keep it all to themselves, that you have what you have. The same thing can be true for your Amazon business. You aren't going to borrow money from an uncle or aunt or anyone. You're going to take the resources you have, and it can be time, money, or skills, and put that into the business with nothing else. And that's what I think, that's what I consider bootstrapping for the Amazon business. And along with that, again, you have to have the right expectation. If you're only putting in a little bit of money, I think it's great because you're limiting your risk. There's risk in every business. There's risk in this business. And the less you have to put in, the less risk you have. Uh, and so to me, bootstrapping is that putting in the resources that you have, limiting your risk and knowing that you have to make up for that lower cash investment with more time and more street smarts to really build up your skill set, even if you don't have those skills right now. Very good. 
Now on the product side, so let's talk about finding that product and bootstrapping the business. You mentioned that you had a bit of a checklist. You want to go through some of the steps? Yeah. And before we get to the product side, I tried to be thinking like, what do you even do before you get a product? Like some people would say, go out there and create your Amazon seller account. I'm here to tell you, no. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, we all know that you, you'll want to eventually get on the professional plan, which is 40 yep. bucks a month. There's no reason to do that. Don't set up an Amazon seller account um, until you have your product and you're ready to sell. Don't set up a business, an LLC, an S Corp or anything. You don't need any of that until you have a product. Uh, on the training side, if you're going to you know, budget only $500,000 on your product, that's all you got, don't go spend thousands of dollars on training. I mean, it's me telling you this and you know, amazing sales at high-end training course. I'm telling you that if you can't afford it, don't do that. Learn everything you possibly can uh, from YouTube, from groups like the Lunch with Norm, the Beardheads, uh, the Beardos. Uh, uh, it's going to like learn everything you can. Build, try to get some trusted friends to help you out because you don't need to invest all that money in training yet um, if you're just getting started. So that's coming from Mike, the guy who tries to do that, telling you don't do that right now um, if you're really getting going. That all brings us to what Norm said next. It's the product. And for me, again, it, I mean, I, I can keep hammering this. The expectations have to be set realistically. You don't want to sell a million dollar product. You don't want to sell a product that's over the competitive. To me, this is going to sound like really like maybe I'm lowering the bar too much. I want to find a product that I can make two to five sales a day. That's all that I'm looking for, because to me, that's enough to make a little bit of profit every single day. Um, so, so that's what I'm looking for, a product that has the potential of two to five sales a day. That might mean that the top seller is doing a whopping 10 a day, um, which kind of tells you like how low volume these categories are. But for me, I just want to get two to five a day. I also then, I want to look for really affordable products, Norm, because a, your inventory is going to be directly proportional to the selling price of the product. In general, think 25% of the sales price of the product has to go towards actually purchasing that product. Um, when I realized that ratio, I kind of blew my mind. Like, you mean I'm buying all these products on Amazon for 40 bucks and the suppliers make, you know, I'm buying it for 10? Yeah, they are. It's kind of the way the world works when you add in marketing and fees. So I like products that are selling for 10 to $25 on Amazon Norm, because then I know I can buy those for two and a half, maybe five, six bucks. Um, on where we can get. Let's start with Alibaba. It's simple. People may hate on Alibaba, but it is still a great place if you're getting going to find cheap, good quality products if you know what to look for that you can you know, get shipped to you for low MOQs and whatever cost and budget you have out there. So those are the two things like products you can sell two to five units a day uh, and priced 10 to $25 on Amazon. That's a real good start for looking for a product and avoid anything that has competitors that are really in the top, you know, 100, 500 BSR, maybe even a thousand BSR. Again, I want these ones that aren't selling a lot. Think of these really like kind of boring products because all the big competitors that you and I know, Norm, they're going to avoid these because there's no big ROI on these. Right. Um, the return on investment is very small for them. So they're going to take their time, their money, and they're going to focus on other things. People getting started want to bootstrap this, focus on these pretty low volume, low cost products because they're the way to make some very, you know, very good, solid profit if you don't have a lot of expenses and don't have these really high expectations that you're going to become a millionaire in the next 12 months. When I'm thinking of these products, when you're thinking of these products, are you thinking about, okay, I'm not spending my money on brand right now, but I'm thinking about being able to widen from the product selection. So it might be, uh, let's say it's a, a back scratcher or a soap back scratcher, right? But I'm also thinking, okay, maybe I could spread out to the loofahs and the poofs. And the. It, are you thinking about that now? Or are you just saying, let's start, let's get our feet wet, let's pay our Amazon tax? That is an awesome question. I think you can do either one. Um, I don't think it has to be very linear that you have to build one. You can build a big brand around. Um, sometimes it's so hard to find a product that you can start with that I wouldn't limit it to what you can expand next. Um, because I also think that no matter what you sell, you can always expand. Right. Um, you know, you know, it may not be the area you really want to get involved in and have a passion for, but this first product, the passion is going to be from 
the experience, not from the product. And so I'd focus on one that I think you can get your feet wet with first and don't worry about expanding. Expanding can always happen. And I, I've, oh, I was going to say, I, I'm talking about kind of like, they can be anything, Norm. They can be acorn nuts. And I mean, mm -hmm. like, not the kind you go out there and find in your yard. Think of these little hex nuts that have like a round top. Um, those sell probably, you know, anywhere from two to 10 a day on Amazon. Boring as all get out would be really easy to brand as long as you can put a label on the package yourself. Um, very low cost and hardly any competition or reviews out there. Um, that's the, I mean, they don't have to be like little things like that, but things that you normally wouldn't get excited about are the ones that I'm really talking about. Yeah. A, a lot of brown bag products are the ones that I like chair glides, you know, who, who's going to sell chair glides, you know, well, it's a great little niche, right? Uh, I guess the next question with this, then going along the niche, maybe, you know, you have a creative block and, and I've seen, I've seen people, what if it, what if it, what if it to death and they don't do anything at all, where do you start? Like, do you, is it a hobby? Do you talk to your friends? Because there's millions of products out there. What do you know, or how do you know where to even start to look for the product opportunity? So two things I would suggest. One, I'd always start with what you're interested in, um, what you have knowledge in. So look around your office, your house, your garage, your yard. See the things that you've bought over the years, the things that you use, and start there. That's usually the, the first place I start. Go look at your Amazon account. See what you bought. You know, Amazon keeps a history for the short period of forever. So you'll know exactly what you bought from them. And that's a great place to kind of get an idea of products you might be interested in, even if you don't realize it. Um, now, next, unfortunately, I'm not here to sell anyone a tool. There's a lot of great Amazon tools out there. Uh, we have one of them. There's a lot of them out there. I think that you'll need a tool to do some research. Like mm -hmm. just from everything that I, we used to do back in 2013, you used to be able to go out there and tell a lot from products by looking at Amazon. Heck, you just looked at the reviews and their BSR. Now you need to know for this product, how well does it sell on Amazon, which you can't tell by looking at Amazon. So I think you'll need a tool out there, you know, um, let's name all the big ones. There's Helium 10, MBS, uh, Jungle Scout, Zoof. Uh, there's other ones out there as well. I'm not gonna guide you towards any certain one of them. Those tools will help you look at products on Amazon with use of the Chrome extension and get an idea of how well they sell. Uh, and I think that's the next step. So think about your interests that you may like, um, and then, Use any of those tools out there and do a search for your interest. For example, wine drinking accessories. I like drinking wine. I'm probably going to do some on my vacation here. Uh, gardening tools, uh, uh, babies. I mean, if you just like raising kids, baby safety stuff, do general searches on Amazon. Use any one of these tools and start looking for, for products that have a fairly low revenue potential. Um, and I'm talking probably, you know, 10 to 20,000 total for like the top seller. And they also, you can see products are doing two to five a day in there. I don't want to see a product doing 50 or hundred a day. That's too much competition. I really look at like these lower units a day products and you'll need a tool to tell you that. Um, and to me, that's where I go. Start with the interest, typing in these things on Amazon, use any tool out there to look for something that's priced between 10 and 25, and then does these lower volume units per day. That's where I would start right there. And you'll start seeing a lot of them out there. Um, and, and, and that's where you start thinking, huh, of these five that kind of meet the Mike and Norm bootstrapping methodology, which ones might be kind of interesting to me? Um, it's as simple as that. I'm not saying it's quick and fast and you'll find one in 15 minutes. That's the process, though, to try to find something you could start with for low cost. You know, uh, one of the other things that I look at it, around the house, if I hear, or if I say, man, I wish if you're using a product and you say, oh, if it only had, then you could take a look and start looking into it. Now, here's a, here's an interesting story. This went on to be a huge, huge life changer for my family. Huge life changer. My mom went to Walmart. She came back with a, um, uh, a what are they called uh, cosmetic foam okay eva cosmetic foam 
And she, you know, turned and she looked at my dad and said, you know, why don't you make this? And it was just EVA foam. And the issue that there was, was it always turned yellow. It looked kind of ugly. So my dad, he's a smart guy. He went out and he found a way, found a patent on how to make it white, stay white. He invested, like, it, this wasn't a cheap thing, but he just saw an opportunity, made it stay white, so it was always white. And then our family, through contract manufacturing, became the leading provider of all this EVA foam to Walmart, to the, like all the private label brands. And this made us, a, a, it, we killed it in this marketplace, all because my mother walked into the living room one day and said, you know what? Maybe you should, and we're talking about a dollar a pack or $2 a pack. It's one of these brown bag pot products that nobody was thinking about. And, you know, it, it turned into a huge business for us and all the other offshoots to EVA. Now we're not talking about Amazon, but I'm just talking about thinking about product ideas or product opportunity. So anyways, the other thing I wanted to uh, uh, just mention, uh, like we said at the beginning, we have a little bit of a different format today with uh, the Wheel of Kelsey. So if you're interested in the Wheel of Kelsey, it's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Kelsey, what is the mystery word today? I think hashtag amazing is a nice and easy one. Hashtag amazing is an awesome one. And then if you want to... Uh, <laughs> If you, we got to get him a, a lunch with Norm Mug. Uh, so, uh, and if you want to enter twice, it's just tag two people and you'll get a second entry. So a little bit different, hashtag Willa Kelsey, uh, hashtag amazing, and then tag two people if you want a second entry. And Mike, what are we giving away today? So we're going to give away a free, it wasn't me, three 30 days of Zoof, our all new software tool uh, at the platinum level. We're going to double that to 60 days actually though. So um, th that'll be the free price. Anyone can get 14 days, just so you know, um, yep. they go there and try it out. So we want to do something a little better, uh, make it 60 days. And for you, Norm, I'm going to give you guys every single dollar we collect over that 60 day free trial. Is that good? Kelsey, does that make, is, is that good? Wow. <laughs> you get 100% oh, yeah. Okay. Trial. All right. All right. Very good. All right. Very good. How long is a piece of string, Mike? <laughs> But yeah, six day free trial um, for whoever um, is the winner today. Uh, we'll be taking care of getting there. We don't have like a certain discount code. It's we have to set up personally. So yep. once we get that winner, get them to them. And I'm uh, also happy to help them try the tool out uh, and let me know what they think. I read every email. I want to know how to make it better. Fantastic. And you know what, Kels? Let's add a mug to that too. So we've got our mugs Why with not? the M&Ms. Let's send it out. Uh, if if you win today, you're going to get the, the mug as well. So um, just hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, uh, hashtag amazing. I see uh, P has already done that. And then uh, tag us and you'll get a second entry. Now, uh, Kelsey, can you put your finger on that button and right. hit it now, soon? Phone letter Legion is your go-to community where you can learn, grow, and build your Amazon and e-commerce business. As you know, being an entrepreneur can be lonely. Now you can share struggles, build a network, and celebrate your successes. And guess what? Our community is free. All you have to do is head over to our Facebook group to join. You can also watch us on our YouTube channel at Private Label Legion so you can stay up to date with tips, strategies, and advice from other experts in the industry. Okay, remember one thing, to get all this great information, follow us, subscribe, and ring that bell so you can get automatic notifications. Okay, so if you're listening, uh, I'd love to hear if you've bootstrapped a product. Uh, you know, there is there's a whole other method of product uh, opportunity and launching when you want to jump in two feet. But if you've bootstrapped and you've done it with a tight budget, let me know what you did or uh, what was your success. Did you do it uh, or did you end up paying a lot of Amazon tax? Okay. So Mike, we talked about the product opportunity. What about the difference in the launch? And one thing I've, I've got to say, one thing I've always remembered you on stage. Uh, I, I'm not sure when it was, but you talking about the 
uh, the Amazon or, or the Blitz traffic, right? And I've always, always used that Blitz traffic method um, about multiple channels, but it's too costly, I think, to do it when you're bootstrapping. What are the differences like when you're when you're launching a bootstrap product compared to the other? Yeah, so, and, and you're right, like normally, um, normally, sorry. Normally. Kind of, uh, um, you would want to do the blitz, the, the traffic blitz, which we've been talking about for years. I'm so glad you and I kind of talked about that where we like were preaching from the mountains for years. This works. And finally, Amazon in the past year says, hey, by the way, we really like all this traffic coming in. They admit it to us. So that's kind of a nice validation. We were, we were on to something normal. <laughs> um, when, when you're bootstrapping a product, you still can do, take advantage of every free thing you can possibly do. Um, one, even though it's probably not going to be a sexy, cool, awesome product, post on Facebook. Like, um, all, you know, if people are still concerned about the product that you're selling, like when you think you found this million dollar winner, you shouldn't worry about that with this first product you're, you're looking at. This probably won't be the product that you retire off of. Um, you, I, I would share with my family and friends. I know it sounds so simple, but tell people like, hey, I'm selling this product on Amazon. I would really, really, really appreciate you supporting me in this. And the key to making this work, not the key, but a key to helping it is once they, for those who kind of jump in and say, we're going to buy it, ask them to share it. Take a screenshot of their Amazon order. Hey, I just bought these hex, but you know, the hex nuts from Mike and that will be shared with them and their friends. I actually know one of our, a good friend of mine now, Katie Kopstad, um, she started selling within the past year. Um, she sells coffee related products. Like she shares her product out there. It's uh, drink with Katie is her brand out there. She launched her entire brand this way by asking all of her friends to as many as possible buy her product and just post a picture of their Amazon order on there. And it went viral. She sold 300 the Thursday. It's kind of crazy. You know, again, she had a very good product, probably higher end, but the same, the same methodology can apply. If you have a few friends you can share it with, ask them to buy the product for you. Um, also, huh, Anyone who's never advertised on Google before can get free money to advertise on Google. Right. So if you yeah, go sign up for a Google ads account, wait until you have your product ready to launch and then get 50 to hundred dollars in free ads to send to your product on Amazon. I, did, Mike, realizing, yeah. I just got an email. Sorry for interrupting oh, for okay. $500 credit. Imagine that. Imagine how much traffic you could get with $500 Google traffic is still cheaper than Amazon PPC right now. Um, it's external traffic, so you don't have to worry about the conversion rate nearly as much as you might when, when you're really trying to launch a product. Amazon loves it. Uh, and it's free traffic. You can spread it out over a week or two. Those two methods alone will get you sales and get your launch. Also, YouTube. There's nothing, uh, it doesn't cost anything to create a YouTube video of you showing your product and using your product. Um, there's Pinterest, it's free. There's TikTok, it's free. There's Instagram, it's free. Um, anything that you can think of it, uh, that is free way to get your product out there is a good thing to do. Uh, I had a, had a business partner in another business many years ago, and he actually like kind of taught me the, con the concept of not a traffic blitz, but like it was a uh, an internet blitz is what he called it. Anywhere you can get a free link to your product is a good thing to do. It used to be back in the day, super pages, yellow pages, whatever, for local businesses. You can go out there and get free links for your product. Post about your product on, like I said, on Facebook. Uh, create a free Google My Business account. Link to your product on Amazon. Um, there's, you know, all, all these other avenues you have out there. Uh, LinkedIn create a free one, get it a link to your product. All these little things by themselves aren't going to do much, but combined, you'll start getting traffic that you never even know. You'll never know where it's coming from, but it helps rise the uh, the, the ranking of your product. Um, and it, it'll help. I mean, that th those are the ways to boost traffic. Free traffic you can get that you don't pay for is an awesome way to get your product going on Amazon. Yeah. A couple of other options people can do too. Um, I love content marketing. I mean, content marketing is every, and it just doesn't mean a blog article. It's everything that you just mentioned It's repurposing content. It's video posts. It's, it, it, there's tons of different types of content marketing, but at the end of the day, 
you want to become the authority. And it doesn't matter if you're having a small product or not. It doesn't cost you anything to write articles. Um, I would I would suggest going to a company like Jasper or uh, Phrase. I love Phrase. And that's F-R-A-S-E. And they can help generate ideas for content or see what you have to do to become better rated. But that's all. Uh, it's very inexpensive. And you can just take some time to post. But also... Who are the authorities in your niche and can you guest post for them? Now, we did something way back in the day with Dr. Phil and we got a link there. And what it did for the site at the time was it was night and day overnight. Like what the heck happened, you know, overnight. And um, then, you know, we just, I mean, that was my first wide eye, uh, eyes open wide experience with links and what they can do. But there's all sorts of other things that um, I, I think are available too. So, you know, press releases, We I, I'm big on press releases with content. You, you just talked about Google My Business. But user-generated content using friends and family. Kelsey and I are doing something right now. We're sending out a bunch of new product to a bunch of our friends and family. And we've got it on Shopify. It's not on Amazon. And we're getting tons of user-generated content. If you want it, here's a free product. And just shoot us a video or uh, an image just so we have user-generated content. Now, the other part to this is you can go out and very inexpensively use nano influencers and get them either to post a uh, photo image. But what I like is going one step further and either getting them to post on their network user generated, or sorry, a, a blog article, or provide them with a contest and give them some sort of reason to, you know, provide your product to their network and you'll give 10 away. But also, right now with the Amazon, and you have to be brand registered for this, so this might not apply to bootstrapping, but with the brand referral program, give them the 10% and then, you know, they'll really push your product. The last thing I want to say about this is, um, you know, Stephen Black? Yeah, sure do. Okay, so Steve, what a great guy. Stephen was been, been on the podcast before, and he talks about, and I think this is perfect for bootstrapping. Go into groups and listen. Go into groups and have valuable content. Value, value, value. People will start to come over to your, um, your, your Facebook page. Value, value, value. Then you can hit them with a promo. The other thing that we've done, we're building this brand right now. We're not spending nothing. Like it, it's a few hundred bucks. We've got five thousand likes on our page now we're waiting till we build this up to ten thousand and then the traffic blitz will happen and this is going to like this is a bootstrapped product so these are things that i learned from stephen black and you know just sitting and listening because you have to know the tone of the voice you have to know their keywords and then you can start applying those to these you know, these free services or very inexpensive services. So anyways, kind of just went on, but I like, I love this topic because we're kind of doing this right now with, with something we're just testing. You know, and, and we still, to this date, do these things we're talking about. I have products that I'm testing out that I don't know if I want them, you know, to, to like spend all the time on them and turn them into a brand. I buy a hundred units of them. You know, it's a plain white box. And I still, to this day, I'm going to pull this out right here. If you don't want to pay for fancy packaging, but you want to like start building your, where the brand is, I love foil labels. I like, if you have like a bubble wrap or yep. just a, any kind of poly bag and you want it to be, to look a little nicer, print out some of these foil labels. They look a lot nicer. Yeah. Use the seals on your current products. I still use these today. And when I'm testing out new products and some of my existing products, it gives people a little higher perception of your business even if it's a plain package you can do little things like that that cost very very little okay fba fbm which which one should you do or do i'd you start do out both? fbm i would start out if i'm 
testing the waters, I would start out FBM because you can control everything about that whole process. And you don't have to worry about, um, it's just so much simpler to get going. You can get a, you can use Amazon shipping service still. You get still a really good discounted shipping when you're doing FBM. Uh, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to like go out there and worry about how Amazon's going to sell it. Start FBM. If you get traction, and then send in 20, 50, 100 to Amazon FBA. Uh, but you don't have to start FBA right away. You can. So, but FBM. so you were talking about Amazon shipping services. So, we, and I should explain if you don't know. So, FBM is you fulfill it. It's called fulfilled by merchant. FBA is fulfilled by Amazon. Amazon will charge you an additional fee to pick, pack, and ship. You said, oh, you can use Amazon services. So that might, can you explain that? Because people might get mixed up. Like why, if I'm if I'm selling or if I'm sending it out by merchant, wouldn't I just call UPS or FedEx? Can you go from there and just explain what yeah, that service is? Yeah, that's a good point, Norm. So even if you're selling it by merchant where you're going to handle the whole shipping process, when you get that sale on Amazon, in your account, you can use Amazon to purchase the shipping. Even though they're not doing the shipping, you get to take advantage of their really cheap shipping rates, which they're as good as anything I've ever gotten on you know, stamps.com or any kind of service like that. And the nice thing about using Amazon to print out the shipping label for you is then that way you know that they track it, they have the tracking number, they know that it's been delivered or not. It makes the process seamless and you don't have to have a separate account of your own to pay for shipping. Uh, and the nice thing about this whole process is you're not, there's no cash out of pocket because Amazon will deduct that money from what they're going to pay you instead of you going out there and paying for the shipping up front. I love uh, thinking about creative cash flow ways, especially when you're, you know, bootstrapping. That's another way to not pay for the shipping. And just have, have Amazon deduct it from what they're going to pay you in two weeks. Very good. And you mentioned about packaging as well. So uh, just, Right. At the beginning, usually there's no way to do affordable packaging, custom packaging. You just you, you can't do it at 250 units or 500 units. You'll be paying through the nose. So these you, you can and they're all over like you lines out there. There's a ton of packaging companies out there that have a plain either craft paper, white box, and you can get something that will just closely fit your product. And you can put, like you said, the a foil label or something that can give the client or uh, sorry, the customer a better or higher perceived value when they they reach when when it reaches them. You have anything to add to that? Uh, I know you you said it perfectly. Like even though we talk about on the high end how important or the value of having a really nice package product can be. On these lower end products, people are not expecting to have an Apple quality type packaging. They just want the product and they want it to be packaged well. So don't spend all the money on a really great product packaging. It kind of be a waste of time right now. Yeah, and just imagine, like, you know, sometimes when you're looking at either your social media or your Amazon post and you see a perfectly polished image, and then you see one that just is a user like opening up the box and you could tell it's done by an iPhone. It's crazy, but there's more engagement on the user generated content there is, than there is on polished images. Now think about this. If somebody gets a white box and it's a small product and they know you're a small business or you're just basically you can see that you're just starting out. That's a whole other mindset. And you might want to, this is just a, if you're, if you're fulfilling from your own um, garage, I've always talked about this. I think it's so inexpensive. Throw in a customized note. Just, just thank you, Sophie, for your purchase. I really appreciate it and sign your name. You know, that, that I know on, on some of our products, we get more comments about handwritten notes than the product. I don't know. Maybe that's a bad thing, <laughs> but maybe our product <laughs> sucks. But uh, <laughs> but anyways, the handwritten notes go over really well. But it, but people like the underdog. They, they sure do. You know what we've been doing now lately too is sending out little magnetic business cards. Mm. Put your logo on one side. 
it's a magnet they can throw on their refrigerator. People don't throw out magnets. They just don't do it. Um, and you can have these made for probably 20 cents each. Depends yeah. on, you know, if you got the budget for your product yet. But what a great way to build a little goodwill and also have people keep your company's name front and center. Um, I think, I mean, just Google any amount. There's, there's, there are new things people are offering. Very inexpensive magnetic business cards. You can keep them. If you don't can't afford them for every product, you don't have to put them in every product because you're the one controlling it. Just do it every other product. Uh, get your name out there and you're right, Norm. That little touch gets people in the right mindset to really want to cheer for you and see you be successful. Yeah. What is the uh, expression that Brian Tracy, uh, I, I was a huge fan of Brian Tracy back in the day. And it was uh, the difference in the prize could be millions of dollars by a, a first place horse winning by a nose. I mean, you're only out by a nose and make that much of a difference is the difference between millions and, you know, nothing, maybe yeah. not nothing. You know, Norm, I want to talk quickly about the, the, the traffic blitz we talked about for us as, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, sure. Even though we're, you know, this conversation is all about bootstrapping and how to help people who really don't, can't afford or don't want to risk a lot of money. Uh, certain things we've mentioned here apply to everyone. And everything that you and I talked about getting all this traffic for free um, applies to the biggest sellers out there as well. If you have a big brand and you've invested a hundred grand in products and you're doing a launch, everything we talked about should be done here as well. Have your friends, you know, post about the sale on it, get some user generated content, do a press release, get your free blog posts, wherever you can get them out there, go to groups. That's one of the things, no matter what product you're selling, everyone should be doing because there's no downside, only a huge amount of upside for this. Yeah. And one other thing, uh, probably one of the most important things that you can do. And it, it just, I, I say it, but it, you know, it, it's so important is getting out and finding a community that you can work with, uh, either finding a Facebook group or finding some form of community or going to an event. It doesn't have to be a paid event. There's a lot of meetups going on around like Carlos Alvarez. Um, he has 16 meetups every month. He doesn't charge a penny. So this is where you can learn. This is where you can meet with your peers and discuss things. And like I said, uh, Amazon, the Amazon community is give, are, are filled with people who love to just give, share information, which you're not going to find in many industries. So that's, you've got the product, you've bootstrapped it. Uh, now you're doing your product launch. Now you have to know the tricks of the trade. Now you have to know Amazon. And then if you want to go even further, off Amazon marketing, your packaging, your branding, you learn all that through different groups. You know, and uh, listing a little bit too, if you want, because that's, it won't take much time. Oh, but sure. Already, uh, oh, oh, yeah, let's do it, Mike. You, you've already touched upon, uh, I had him in my notes as well, that if you don't know how to write a product listing or a blog post or a Facebook post, there are tools out there that never existed before. Uh, Jarvis, that now goes by Jasper, Probably got That's in trouble right. with Iron yep. Man. Um, <laughs> then there was, uh, what was the one you mentioned? Phrase with an F. Um, there's Copy AI, Copy Monkey. All of these tools are amazing and all of them have free trials. And I actually signed up for Jasper the first time just last night. The things you can do with these as far as creating a product listing are amazing. I can't, yeah. I wish I would have had them, you know, eight, nine years ago. But if you don't want to pay someone to do it, a product listing for you. You can do use one of these tools I mentioned to do some free keyword research. And then you uh, like Zoo, Killing 10, Managed by Stats, Seller Tools, Jungle Scout. I, I love them all out there. Great people. And then use one of these other AI tools to help write your listing. Jasper Jarvis, Copy AI, Copy Monkey, Phrase, and all those have free trials. You could get all this done for free before you even spend the dime and have a listing even for a, a very simple product that's going to look as good as any, probably better than the competition that's out there. Yeah. And Telefox is another one that's come up and uh, like uh, copy monkey yeah. tried it looks good. And Telefox is another excellent. Uh, and all they do is specialize in AI for pro Amazon product, product listings. So it's pretty cool. It, it's amazing how much like they go out there and they read the internet. Like yeah. they, they know content and topics that are going out out there. Um, I, when I watch the marketing video and I'm in marketing, 
I kept thinking, that's eh, not going to do all the things they talk about. And then when I started using it, it was pretty incredible. Um, and so AI is the wave of the future. And if it's free, I'm all for using it. I love it. Get your free trials, uh, get your product listed out there. Um, and don't spend really a dime on your listing or, you know, on, on even writing your blog post. Right. But one thing I, I, I do want to stress that when you get to that state and you do have some money or you want to spend a bit more money, this is where you, I, I can't say it enough, is you have to get, forget the community, get a course and understand the course. Um, I've paid the money for the course. There's millions of courses. I mean, Am amazing has got an amazing course. I mean, that's the one that I took. Uh, Helium 10 has got freedom ticket. Uh, there's a bunch of them out there. You can go to Udemy, but get a course and work through it. So you understand Amazon and then you can take it to the next step. You know, you become a solopreneur, then you start hiring VAs and you become a business, but bootstrapping hey taste the water first see if you like it you know make a couple extra bucks you know buy steak instead of bologna uh <laughs> it's all good it sure is and it's possible you know and we don't talk about it too often yeah i mean you don't hear me talking about it in, because people are in the space you know that are, that are focusing on building huge brands um, they scoff when you talk about spending a little only a little bit of money on your product but what they don't realize is what we're talking about is getting your feet wet, having the right expectations so that you can really get to know this business. And if it takes you a year to, you know, to launch your product and make a couple hundred, hundred extra bucks a month, who cares? That's a couple hundred extra bucks, bucks a month, a lifetime worth of valuable education. And then you can now decide to take that money and launch it on a more valuable product if you want to. It's a great way to learn. It's better than any kind of education, uh, actual experience and doing this business. And the entire point of this is you can do this, get this experience and don't go broke doing it, nor risk a lot of money. It's possible. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Yeah. And it's a life experience. So let's say Amazon isn't your bag. So maybe Shopify will be, maybe a dropship model, maybe a wholesale model. Maybe there's all sorts of different models, but you've got the foundation to start to understand this type of business, this type of business model is very unique. It's nothing like bricks and mortar. And there's very little to no investment to get started. So I think we've covered the topic. Uh, if there are, and Mike, do you have any uh, notes or uh, a PDF that you might be able to supply into the group? You know, I, I, I have my Google Keep notes, but what I will do is I will put them into a PDF. I'll email them okay. over to you and Kelsey um, in the next 24, 48 hours, and then you can share with anyone that you want. Okay, fantastic. That's great. Now, I just noticed, Kelsey, we've got a few questions. Can we just answer those? Yeah. So uh, the first one, there's a couple of just comments that I, I think yep. that are great. Um, when we were talking about whether you should talk about your brand publicly or keep it a secret, Christine mentioned, uh, when we first entered this world, we were taken back by how private everyone was about the product. <laughs> we quickly learned that we were supposed to be much more hush hush than we usually are. However, I find that sharing our products make it easier for people to help. We've gotten great tips because we're, we've been more open. So, Amen. That is true. Give, give to get. All right. Uh, Marsha, uh, one of our lovely beardos, she's asking, yes, I bootstrapped uh, Stable Copper. What a learning process. Uh, how do you and Mike handle being in Amazon prison? <laughs> I'm assuming that means that maybe you got a count taken down or suspended at some point in time. Um, I mean, it's happened to pretty much all of us. It's probably happened to me two to three times over the years. Uh, it's frustrating because all you do is get the canned responses back. That's, I mean, you, you you can read them and you you want to bang your head against a brick wall. Um, the, the the most important thing is to just apologize. And, and I mean, I hate to say, it, even if you really did nothing wrong, tell them exactly what you're going to do to fix the problem, even if you didn't think you did it. Like, oh my gosh, I, I acknowledge this is the problem. Uh, here's what I'm doing to that I've already done to fix it. And here's what I'm going to do to make sure it never happens again. That's the best way to get your account appealed if, if it's suspended. Um, and it, do, it doesn't happen as much as it used to. Um, but if it does happen, 
just apologize. Their bots pick up things sometimes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have any advice, Norm, as well. No, it was horrible back in the day because they would just suspend you and they wouldn't even give you a reason why. So you'd have to go and try to figure it out. At least now they're starting to give you uh, a bit more of a reason. And uh, sometimes you get advanced notice. So, you, you know, if you're doing something wrong or if you're underperforming uh, in, in an, an area, uh, you'll get flagged. But yeah, I agree with you. If you don't want to spend a lot of money and go to hire a lawyer right now, if you're bootstrapping it like Marsha, um, try to do it yourself. Then you can reach out um, to the professionals. I saw Nir was on here. You know, he's somebody that could help out. You've got all sorts of people like Chris McCabe um, that can help you out. There's a bunch of different people that specialize in it, but you can always try to appeal yourself. And when you do it, similar to the way that Mike was talking about it, uh, a lot of the times you'll just get, you'll get back on, but sometimes you have this looping, horrible, this is where the love hate comes in. This horrible looping email that no, it seems like nobody's listening. So that's when I have to go to and find a, a person like Chris or somebody like that. Okay. And I would just, I don't want to, you know, promote our own Facebook group or anything like that, but if you don't know where to even look for that, um, that's where these Facebook groups are great because you can ask, Hey, do you know a translator? Do you know a, a patent attorney? And we've got communities that can help you out. It doesn't have to be lunch with norms community. It can be any community. Are you talking you about the lunch with norm, with Amazon FBA and e-commerce collective? E -commerce collective? Of course not. No, never. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But anyways, we do have a couple more questions and then we'll get right to the Wheel of Kelsey. So our listeners, just stay tuned. We've just got a couple more minutes until the giveaway and we'll get you, let you know the winner. So Claudia is asking, what do you think about advertising on Bing as well as Google? I think Bing is probably a lot cheaper than Google. Do enough people use Bing to have it be worthwhile? Yeah, I'll, I'll go first, Norma. Yeah, absolutely. Bing is worthwhile. Uh, it is more affordable. They have pretty much the exact same ad structure that every other major company has out there. Um, we advertise on Bing. We don't, and, and even though the volume is not as much as Google, it's still volume. I mean, any clicks that I get that are targeted to our product for the right audience is a good click. And if it's cheaper, that's even better. And most PCs still come with, you know, Microsoft. It's not no longer Internet Explorer. It's Edge. Um, and Bing is the default search engine uh, on those. So, so many PCs out there by default are going to be seeing Bing ads. So absolutely go out there, get an account on there. Um, they also offer free advertising. Um, and if you're bootstrapping, take advantage of it, whether it's 50 or 100 bucks, use it. And then if it doesn't work out for you, you haven't spent a dime. Yeah, uh, Bing is is a, a great option uh, or, you know, just, it, I believe it's 20%. I think that's the ratio. They get, they take up 20% of the searches. Uh, I went to an, a, a training course here in Canada at the Microsoft uh, head office and learned a ton about that search engine. It's, it's overlooked so much, but it can be so useful. And it, yes, you're correct. It is less expensive. So um, I would, I would use the both Google Bing can. Oh, and I noticed, uh, who was it? Yanni. Yes, yes. Private Label Legion. Tons of content over there as well. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kareen uh, is uh, mentioned, I failed at Amazon, but I discovered a love for digital marketing. Great, great to hear. Perfect. Sorry about failing at Amazon, but I'm glad you found now, digital marketing. You know what? I always call it, it's not failing. It's, I call, like when I when I mess up, right? It's education, number one, but I always call it failing to succeed because every time you fail, you're one notch closer to succeeding. You know, you, you learn, you learn, you learn. So yeah, it's uh, that digital world. There's so many different outlets there um, that again, it just, you go, you start at one place, you might end up 10 different places and then you find your love affair. All right. And from Tony, a new brand that I'm building out reached a maximum of 5K Facebook friends. Is there any way around this that I can do to keep growing the niche? Well, Norm, you have more Facebook experience than I do. I'll let you take that sure. one. So, I mean, there's lots of things that you can do. The main thing is uh, just driving traffic over it, finding 
Kelsey, the, the main thing that we do is we create campaigns like campaigns and we get people that are a specific audience that we're targeting and, and bringing over. Then as we grow even that campaign, um, what we'll be doing with it is uh, doing building a lookalike audience. Now, I heard something last night. Okay, so I was talking to this, F uh, Kelsey and I were talking to this Facebook expert, um, really interesting guy, Colby. And he was saying he started targeting with a interest. Like, you know, we, we would, you, you talk to Manol, you know, our friend. And, you know, he he's taught me uh, in some of the uh, webinars I've heard from him, the, you know, how to be very specific. And Colby says, like, that whole part about uh, zeroing in, you can do it. The algorithm is so good if they if uh, if you just have a very broad target now a huge target that it'll help you uh, build clients or uh, build likes that way. I was shocked because I would never have thought that it, that was correct, right, Kels? I heard correct. Yeah, I believe so. You know, I don't know if it's the same Manol that you guys know, but I, I know he works also with. Uh, there's a, a Manol that works with Matt Clark and Charles Livingston Business. Yeah, that's um, him. Yeah, sure. Yeah, life booths, life booths cost it. Yeah, yep. They've went, you know, to doing twenty to thirty million dollars a year, primarily using Facebook advertising, and it, that's exactly right. That if you are able to just test out a bunch of different creatives, let Facebook bro use a broad audience, they will be able to figure out better than anyone can which of those audiences people convert better. It has to. You have to give them the feedback like conversions from a Shopify site. But if you can do that, you're right. The the days of trying to narrow down that targeting might be gone because they have a lot more data than we do. Yeah. Yeah. So and so going back, Tony, that's the way that we've built up these 5,000 uh, likes in a very short period of time. There's none of them are bots. We don't buy likes we 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 well we kind of do because it's paid advertising but um but they're not bots and that's the thing and then whenever we post we post content all the time and if we see we have new likes we'll go and target that person and, and get them to like the page as well we'll try to get them to like the page we'll invite them okay and our very last question from cool hunt 99 when asking friends and family for support you say to have them share their purchase should they leave reviews also or is that not ideal um uh family no i would not have any family members to do it friends uh i would ask them if they want to if they like it to share it there's nothing wrong with it i mean the amazon policy is no family nor employees can leave reviews and you cannot incentivize anyone to leave reviews either but think about any company out there, if you know, selling, launching products, Nike, if they launch a product, people tell, you know, and they tell their friends, hey, buy this, if you like it, leave a review. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with having your friends leave a review on Amazon as well. So the only caution to that, and maybe Norm has similar different advice, is that getting too many reviews right away will throttle your, your product from getting a yeah. lot of reviews. So if you sell 20 products and 15 reviews come in, that's too many. So as I say, you can do it. I would just let it come naturally, actually. As I'm thinking through this, let it come naturally. Use Amazon's own request to review feature in there to be very safe. Um, and you may only get a few reviews, but who cares? It's a process. You'll, the reviews will come if you have a good product and you get sales. Yeah, and even if you're just sending it out, the product I was talking about, uh, we're selling it on Shopify, possibly over on Amazon. But uh, I don't know if it'll fit, but we're just sending out product and getting images. Uh, sure, they can leave a review, but they haven't purchased anything. Um, we just want the user-generated content, which if it does go on Amazon, let's say that it is an Amazon play, then you can use it in Amazon Post and get marketing, You know, help build your brand and your brand community over there. But yeah... I, I don't go out. I don't try to, you know, sway people to write a review four to 7%. If I'm in that range, then I'm good. I'm happy. If I get a hundred sales and I get 4% of them coming back. Perfect. That's excellent. And if your brand registered, talk about non bootstrapping. I know you mentioned already, but vine is the way to go. Vine is a great yep. way to get yep. your initial reviews. 
Mike, have we talked this through and through? Are we done? I think, you know, let me, let me look through my super secret. Okay. Uh, all right. Notes. Uh, talked about that. Um, uh, you know, again, for bigger sellers, one point I wanted to make for shipping, shipping is expensive. So yep. if you're bootstrapping and buying on Alibaba, let, you know, get the shipping from Alibaba or from the supplier. It'll be dirt cheap because it's a small quantity. Don't get a freight forwarder. Do the shipping right on Alibaba for bootstrapping. If you're a large seller, if you're not doing it yet, look into AGL, Amazon Global Logistics. Um, they are now Amazon's entire freight forwarding line, and they can give prices, shipping prices. They're like, 40% of what you can get out there right now. Wow. Um, so it's, you just apply for it. It just look up Amazon global logistics. Most third-party sellers now can get approved for it. Um, it doesn't have to be a full container. It can be a less than container load. Uh, and their rates are the best that they've seen. Only downside is that they have to all go to Amazon. So if you're selling on another site, like you have your own warehouse, um, you can't get them out of the Amazon warehouse. You have to like remove inventory, but if you're selling on Amazon, you're a big seller, you know, and you want to get a, a, a shipment and a decent size shipment. AGL is a great option right now that most people don't know about. Very good. We'll check that out. Now, uh, I'm wondering if you are a big enough seller, you could probably move out a portion of your product and then just ship it directly the other side of it, like half and half over to your warehouse using traditional um, ocean cargo. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. Well, perfect. Mike, before we go over to the Wheel of Kelsey, if anybody's interested, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. And the mystery word today is hashtag amazing. Tag two people and you'll get like an entry. How do we contact you, Mike? Yeah, just reach out to uh, supportedamazing.com. That's an easy way to get a hold of me. Um, all those get forwarded to me. Anyone that kind of reaches out to me there. Um, Friend me on Facebook if you want to. Um, you know, I, I, I still try to keep up with friends and family there. Uh, I'm not a TikToker. I'm not an Instagram guy. Like, I don't really do a lot on there. But uh, I will always try to get back with many people I possibly can if you have questions. Okay. And do you want to talk just for a second about your application? Yeah. Yeah. So Zoof. Um, Zoof is a software tool for sellers. It's been around for several years. Uh, it was actually developed for a private mastermind. So for those of you who know Tryon Truco, um, he actually sure. <laughs> was was involved in the development of this along with uh, a young kid who built it at the age of 18, who's just an incredibly you know intelligent guy. And they built this for their mastermind many years ago. Uh, and then we actually got word of it about a year and a half, two years ago. They showed it to us and we loved it. Think of something looking very much like Helium 10 with all the capabilities, but it was faster and cleaner to us. Don't get me wrong. Still love Helium 10, all the people over there. Love Managed by Stats. Love Jungle Scott. Love all the other tools out there. We just found this one that we've always wanted to get back into the tool business. So we got involved in it and we're able then to apply our own criteria, like what I talked about for bootstrapping. And in ASM, we talk about how to find products like this using Zoof. Um, so it does great product research, has an awesome Chrome extension. Uh, we have added in Shopify sales tracking. We're going multi-channel. That will be released anytime in the next seven to 14 days. Mm. Uh, and so our whole goal with Zoof is not only let people who are beginning on Amazon find products using like our spotlight tool, but people who are selling you know, tens of millions of dollars and want to see all their multi-channel sales come in, um, that's where our goal is for Zoof right there. Anyone can go check out Zoof.com, get a free 14-day trial, and the one lucky winner is going to get a 60 day trial. And if this one winner is already a Zoof member, by the way, uh, we'll just credit you back two full months of, uh, of your membership as well. We want to make sure whoever it is wins really gets value out of it. Fantastic. And a lunch with Norm coffee mug and M&Ms. Uh, yeah, so there we go. <laughs> there we go. All right, Kelsey, hit the button. All right, here we go. Uh, a big thank you to our sponsor, Startup Club the largest club on Clubhouse with over 790,000 members and growing. They're one of the world's largest communities supporting the startup ecosystem from founders to those wishing to work for a startup and everything in between. You can find them at www.startup.club for blogs, recordings, and a calendar of upcoming shows and on the Clubhouse app. Just search Startup Club for daily shows 
You can also now listen to their show, the Serial Entrepreneur Club podcast on Apple and Spotify too. Stop by to connect, learn, and grow together. All right. So okay. it's that time, right? Mike's it's never seen the wheel the of giveaway. Kelsey. Yeah, there we go. Oh, so Mike, get ready. Uh, for everyone listening that's new, the Wheel of Kelsey is the giveaway. And uh, enjoy, everyone. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. All right. So thank you, everyone, who entered today's giveaway. We do this every single podcast. So make sure you come back on Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. And I'm going to shuffle up these names. If you are the winner, please email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com. If we don't hear back, we'll reach out again. Uh, and it looks like the winner is Anna. Oh, very close. <laughs> All right, Anna. Anna P. All right, so email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com, and we'll connect you uh, with your prize. And yeah, thank you, everyone, for entering, and come back again Monday. Okay, fantastic. So, Mike, thanks so much for being on. I can't believe it's so long, over 300 episodes before we got you on. So we're going to have to get you on again real soon and, and talk about something. But you're you're just, I love interviewing you. I mean, you're so easy to talk to, and we could just probably talk for another hour easily or two. But um, enjoy your vacation. And uh, we'll, we will talk to you sometime in the near future. I'll see you at an event or in, in one of these Facebook groups or something along the line. But thank you so much for being on the show today. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Norm. Thanks, Kelsey. Love being here. Uh, hope to do it again. Maybe next time we'll go the opposite end. We talked about bootstrapping. Maybe next time we'll talk about some advanced strategies as well, Perfect. because that would be another cool topic. That would be. All right, Mike. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your holiday. Thank you. All right, everybody. So I hope you liked our uh, episode today. It's something that we've really never touched on. And it's so important, especially for us new sellers that would want to get into the business of Amazon. You heard about it. Um, you don't understand it or you're in it and you just want to try something a little bit different, test the waters with a new product um, and don't want to spend a lot of money doing it. There are a lot of tips today. Next week, we have a really great, so Monday, we're going to be talking about something completely different, and that's building out a successful Amazon launch using crowdfunding. And our guest is going to be Vance Lee. So anyway, Kels, where are you? Hello, hello. So yes, hopefully everyone enjoyed our episode. And uh, we do go live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Line. So I, um, I just want to really drill it in today. Line. Um, so thank you, everyone. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. It's good to see uh, some new listeners, too. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. If there's uh, questions, topic suggestions, guest suggestions, you can always email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com. Uh, but again, if you are wanting to be part of a great community, join the Beard Nation. Uh, Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA, and e-commerce collective. Um, almost all of the guests on the podcast, join the group as well. So we've got a ton of experts in there as well, um, where you can ask your questions, you can hang out, we post funny videos, we have fun there. So um, any Amazon seller, e-commerce seller, it's a, the place to be and uh, check it out. And, and thank you everyone. Thank you, Redbeard, Howard, Christine, Buful, Claudia. There's so many of you, Cindy, Michael, Anna. Um, thank you so much for the comments during the show. And um, we hope to have you back soon. Uh, and I think that's it. All right. So like Kelsey said, he stole my one line. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. And also, thank you so much. We had a great turnout today. Our, uh, our uh, community is growing like crazy. We've got tons of engagement. So we could not do this without you. Thank you so much for being part of our community. And we will talk to you soon. We'll talk to you on Monday. Lunch with the lunch with the lunch.